Hello everyone, my name is Rahul. Azure Functions is getting very popular and I start seeing more of them at my clients. One typical scenario I come across is an Azure function talking to an Azure Web API. Every time something like this comes up, it means more Azure AD applications and client IDs and secrets being used to make the authentication. In this video, we'll see how this is done and then move on to use Managed Services Identity, which helps us to remove the need of these IDs and secrets. The platform can manage this for us. Here, I've got an Azure Web API, which is set up to authenticate against an Azure AD application. You can see I have enabled JWT bearer authentication using the client ID and giving in the authority details. The app settings.json has the details for the client ID and the instance and tenants. I have already created the AD application in the Azure portal. If I head off to the portal, you can see there is an MSI test AD application which is created under app registrations. Using this application ID, which is what I have given in the configuration here. So, the Web API is all set up to authenticate using the AD app. This means you need to get a token from the AD app and pass that with any request to this API. This API is a default from the template using Visual Studio. It has a controller with a values endpoint which returns two values. I have also created a function app to simulate the scenario that we need to show here. There is a function which calls this API and logs out the content from it. To start with, I've not added in any authentication. I have deployed this version into the Azure instances that I have. Let's go to the resource group. I have a function and the web API. Both of them are, as you have seen, with the code right now. Let's go to the function and manually run this to see what happens. Let's select function one and press run. You can see that it shows an unauthorized. This is as expected because we have not passed the token from the AD app. Let's head off to the app registrations, go to the AD application, add a new client ID and secret. I have already done this and there's a secret value. Using this secret, we can pass in a token when making a call to the API. Let's move to Visual Studio. Let's go to the Azure functions. I have already written this code, so let me copy paste that for you. As you can see, I've given the client ID, the client secret that was from the portal, and then we need to use an AD credential to use this client ID and secret to authenticate with the AD application. Let me hide this off for you. This requires a couple of new namespaces to be included. Let's add in the required namespaces and then we can get the token. This token needs to be passed whenever we are making a request to the API. The authorization header and pass the token that's received. Let's build the solution and publish to the Azure portal. The publishing profile is set to the function that we had just seen in the portal. The publish is done. Let's head back to the Azure portal, go to the functions, refresh that, and run it again. Now you can see we have successfully authenticated and retrieved the value from the API. As you have seen, we've had to add the client ID and the secret, which obviously would be in a config file, and we need to now keep track of these secrets and rotate them as required. Let's look at how we can remove the need of putting these in the code or in the configuration file. Let's first remove this code. We will need the client ID because that's the AD app against which we need to get the token. So let's keep that there. 
and add in the code to use a Azure Service Token Provider that again comes from a NuGet package and get the access token using the Service Token Provider. The Service Token Provider has multiple modes of getting tokens, one of which is using Managed Service Identity. This works when it's deployed on the Azure environment. As you can see, the token provider tries to get a token for the AD app that we have created. Let's build this and publish it like before. Let's head back to the Azure portal, refresh the page and run the Azure function again. Looks like we have broken something. This is because we are now using Managed Service Identity. To enable MSI or Managed Service Identity, let's go to the Azure Functions. Under Platform Features, go to Identity. Let's turn on the Identity and click Save. This will register the function with the Azure Active Directory and create a Managed Identity for you. Let's click Yes and go back and run the function again. As you can see, this time, the API call is successful and we return the values from the controller. From the code, we have completely removed the need of any secret to authenticate with the identity. The Azure Service Token Provider uses Managed Services Identity enabled by the Azure infrastructure to talk to this client ID and get a token on behalf. This removes the need of any secrets and makes deployment easy. Hope this helps you. If you like these videos, please don't forget to hit the like or subscribe button. Thank you.